Hello everyone, I'm Elliot Harris with the Eurotrip and today Emily is joining us today as well. You have seen her live tweeting many, many a national final so far. <laughs> and today the Melfest, everyone's favourite national final starts today with the video clips and the staging of the first semi-final and we're going to go through them for you, aren't we Emily? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're going to go through them in the order they've been selected to perform our thoughts and who we think our automatic qualifiers are and our under chance picks. So are you ready Emily? Uh huh. Let's go. So, the, so the first song of Melfest 2016 is Samir and Victor with Bada Nakna. <laughs> What were you thinking of it from the 30 seconds you've been given? I thought it was good, but not as good as Groupie. Just because Groupie was one of my favourites last year and it did really well, but obviously I shouldn't compare the two because they're from different years. Um, I do still like it though. It's still very upbeat and energetic like they are as performers and yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I mean, it's very energetic and it's very safe true to who they are as Samir and Victor. Like, they're still bouncing around the stage and they're still having a good laugh. The vocals have improved, you can tell that much, which makes mm -hmm. me happy. Uh, Victor still looks aimless for me. I said this to Rob. I even in the 30 seconds, you see him glancing at Samir almost, and Samir's holding it together. I prefer it to Groupie. Like, it sounds... It sounds like it's constructed smarter, like it doesn't sound like such a mess of melodies music smashed together. So I like it. Um, I don't know how it will do. I understand why it's going first, because it's a good song and it's upbeat and they're popular. But I do like it. I'm just a bit concerned of how it's going to fare. But I, I do enjoy it as well, in all things considered. But I prefer it to Groupie, I think, slightly. Second song is... Pernilla Anderson with Mitt Gould. I'm going to kick this off. I found this really boring. Yeah, same, definitely. It's so sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's only 30 seconds, but it was so boring. And after Simeon Victor, that's really... It's almost sabotage, you can think, from SDP. Yeah. Not, not saying that either or anything, but... It's, she's really unfortunate with that. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, especially after Samir and Victor. And the snippet, even though it's their seconds, as you said, it's really boring. And I can't even see it going anywhere. Like, no, I don't think it'll pick up. No, there's no hint of anything changing in the song. It's just sort of monotone the entire way through. And she just did, she didn't look or sound that engaging either, which really killed it for me. Because a bad song can still be sung and performed well, but I didn't even get that vibe from her, so I have next to no confidence in the song. No, me <laughs> neither. But luckily it's on second, so hopefully I'll get rid of it soon. <laughs> Number three in the running order is Mimi Werner with Ain't No Good. I love this. I absolutely love this song. <laughs> Everyone kind of wrote her off when the semi-finals were announced and their names because there's quite a lot of big names in this fine in the semi with ex male fest competitors and she's obviously it's her first year. But she she's really done well. The song is really catchy and modern. There's a lot of choreography in there which she's doing and keeping up with. I love the little sort of shoulder dance they do. Yeah, I um I like it. It's, I think it's very stereotypically Swedish, for sure. Yeah. It's very upbeat. Um, for now, it it's at the like stage. I think it will grow on me though, um, and especially once I've heard the full song and the full performance, I think I will end up loving it. Um, but I think it'll do well, and I think she has potential to become the next big, you know, Melfest star. Even yeah. if, if she doesn't um, do well this year, she'll come back certainly next year of the year after it's very much carrie underwood gone through sweden i feel yeah <laughs> but i i really like it and rob our head producer messaged me saying he absolutely loves the song in all caps so <laughs> <laughs> i think he's a fan as well song number four is alden and matthias with lick <laughs> Uh, 
Um, I like this one. Um, from the snippet though, it, at the end it seemed to have some rapping, which can go either two ways. It can either go like really good rapping or really bad rapping. And I, I have confidence in it that it could do well just because um, it was vocally carried out very well throughout the snippet anyway. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it does do well, basically. <laughs> I'm really unsure on this song. It didn't grab me, so to speak. There was nothing really to engage me, and I'm just not sure at this moment in time. I mean, it's not sung bad. It's not a bad song by any means. I just don't know if it's something that I would personally pick up to the phone and vote for, and I think with it going against Simi and Victor, that could hurt them. I think it could be one or the other, because it's two male duos, and mm. I... It's it's quite it's quite peculiar the semi finals. We've got two country style songs in Camilla and Mimi, and then two male duos in Simi and Victor and Albert and Matthias in the first four songs. And yeah, I, I don't know right now. It could all change by Saturday, but right now I'm I'm really on the fence with this one. Song five's Anna Book and Himmel for Twa. I think I don't know how you say that word, but it means it means heaven for two, to be direct. Um, it's four. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I, I don't like her vocals in it. It's all it's too cheesy for me. It's it's no, not for me. <laughs> I, I agree actually. I think it's very cheesy. I've seen a lot of people liking it so far. Okay. Um I um personally it's it's not bad. I'd say it's maybe a grower, but for now it's just very, very cheesy. Yeah. It's it's almost a little a little bit ch too try hard, I feel. Like trying to like salvage the 80s so I, I don't know I just don't really like it and then someone did put on Twitter about 10 minutes before I start this recording it's identical to a song that was used in Moldova's national selection back in 2014 the Moldovan song is Felicia Dunoff taking care of a broken heart and I listened to them both and they are <coughs> excuse me they are very very similar like almost identical so I don't know if that's just sheer coincidence or what but even with it in Swedish and Melfest, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of this. For me, no. It's all just a bit too bit too cheesy with the silver glittery jackets and all that. I, it's it's just not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, <laughs> sorry, Anna. Song six is Robin Bengtsson and Constellation Prize. means in the stars and not a, everyone's a winner prize before someone gets confused. I like it. I like this. I like the harmonica and I like how it's quite simple. Yeah, I, I quite like this. It's, it doesn't offend me in this song. <laughs> I, I, it's probably my favourite of the semi-final just because it's so simple. Um, it can be catchy, I'm sure. Uh, I literally only just listened to it about five minutes ago. Um, <laughs> Uh, but his vocals are also very good. Uh, yeah. I noticed, like, there's no, there's nothing that can stop him. I don't think from qualifying. I think. No, nah, I agree. So I like it. I like the harmonica. I wasn't expecting that, so that was a nice little yeah. added bonus. So yeah, final song. It's Ace Wilder and Don't Worry. Now, as we both know, this has been advertised hugely since she was announced that she was competing. And I've never felt so conflicted about a song in Eurovision ever, I think. I was expecting something a lot better than this, but saying that before everyone sounds off in the comments and attacks me, I don't think this is the highlight part of the song. I think this 30 second snippet was decided by her, and it sounds like it's going to go into something right at the end. So I think that was her call. We know she can do better than this. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I again, I compared it to um, "Busy Doing Nothing" that she sang a few years ago, yeah. which was one of my favourites. Um, this didn't do anything for me. I was quite underwhelmed when I first heard it. But as you said, there's probably something out of the song. I know she can do a lot better than what was seen in the snippet. Yeah, because as you said, you know, it's still 
very ace wilderish because she's got the four, the backing dancers are still doing these crazy sort of dance moves and she's joining in. I fought this in 2014 and I think this now I'm still not a fan of her live vocals. But I think this will still do well. But considering I thought considering this is tipped as one of the main challenges to win, right now I'm not convinced. So no. I I don't know. But like I said, they could be hiding something and it wouldn't shock me if she is. I think the thing with Ace is that she has the performance, she has the performing ability, but yeah. her vocals are just not as strong as others. Yeah. Everything's built around her brilliantly. Like, she can dance and she can perform and the songs are always built really nicely. Like, it, she has a distinct sound, but the vocals for me do let her down, which is a shame because it, she seems lovely and she's, like I said, she can perform her heart out, but at the end of the day, part of it is a singing composition. Right, so we've, we've that's the seven songs of the semi-final. Who, which two would you put straight through to the final? Who are your top two picks? Um, probably Robin and uh, Albin and Matthias. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah, Matthias, Matthias, one of the two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, them two. Okay. Um, just because out of all of them, they're my favourites and I would like to see them, basically. Um, I think Robin will, like, I predict that Robin will actually be able to get through and then it'll be between um, Albin and Matthias and Samir and Victor. I have one clear qualifier for me, which is Mimi. She is my absolute favourite in this semi-final. I want her to get through wholeheartedly. She well could be like what Dina Nar was for me last year, me shouting at the TV wanting her to get through. And for the rest, well there's four songs for me which I think definitely will be the top four, which is Mimi, Samir and Victor, Ace and Robin. I've put them in that order. If they will finish in that order, I don't know, because obviously you've got Samir and Victor and Ace with the Mel Fest backing and the support, because that's how they've made their names in Sweden. But you've also got Robin, who's probably got the best song out of those three. But in saying that, Ace and Samir could cancel each other out. Say so it could be the duo and Ace in Andrew Chanson and Robin getting straight through, which I'd be fine with. Personally, just want Mimi to stay safe because I think she is good enough to be in the final. And I have got this horrible feeling that if she is put through to Andrew Chanson, she'll be put with this really strong song from a different semi final and she could miss out, which. Looking at this semi-final, wouldn't be fair if she dropped out. But I do think Anna and Penilla are definitely gone. I don't see yeah. them advancing at all. And Alvin and Matthias, maybe it could be like, oh, the duo from the first semi-final last year, um, who went up against me and Victor in Angela Shanson, and they just brought Malena on for some reason. That is it, Victor Cronin, Barley, Miri. It, it, it could be like that, they could sneak in, but it's just overall, if we're going on songs plus um, going into its support, it's a very close semi-final. Because they've got one or the other. They've either got a strong song or a strong following. Yeah, Melfest is a very uh, unpredictable final, I think. Well, very. semi-final final. Um, anything could happen, really. Yeah, I agree with that. But uh, I I will say this. I do think it's a step up from when they last hosted. Because 2013, Melody Festival was very disappointing, I felt yeah. like the songs and the decisions of said songs were very, very poor. So it's nice that, you know, they've actually upped their game a bit. I don't think the winner is in the semi-final, personally. No. I don't think it is. And the only one I would be happy to see at Eurovision would be Mimi, and I don't think she's going to win.